And so begins day number six of the hero's journey of the half work battle mage. Okay, that's a little bit corny even for me. Roll the credits. Hey everybody, welcome off the shelf Gamer Reviews. This is a YouTube channel dedicated to our gaming hobby and this is part two in a series of videos looking at Dragons Down. Now this is video number two where I'm uncovering days six through 15 for Dragons Down. If you wanna see the first five days of gameplay or see the setup or just see everything about how to play the game, check out the first video in this series. Again, this is a little bit faster gameplay Coverings turn 6 through 15, and again, there's going to be a third video where I'm going to finish off the game, showing days 16 through 30, if we manage to make it that far. So there's a couple liberties I took when I set up the game. If you want to understand some of them, check out that first video. We're going to go ahead and hit things starting with day number 6 with our cleanup. And before we go anywhere, I do need to make one small minor correction, something I did make a minor mistake on. When we picked up the dagger in the clearing, we actually should not have re-equipped it. It should have went into our backpack and not into being automatically re-equipped. Force of habit and just putting it out there, anytime you throw a weapon, it lands in the clearing, and if you defeat all the creatures in the clearing, you effectively walk over, pick up the item, and put it back in your backpack. If you fail to defeat the creatures in the clearing and you have to run away for any reason at all, the item is basically removed from the game. You lost it. You don't pick it up on your way out. It basically becomes fodder for the enemies who use it to go ahead and pick their teeth as they think about you returning because they want to, you know, end your life. So basically, I should have put that item on my backpack. Small little minor correction, but let's go ahead and keep on going from there. So we're starting day six, and we're starting day six that happens to be right on top of the monolith. So since we're on top of the monolith, I think we're going to start things off by doing a search action. Now again, the thing you have to understand about these sites in the game we know that this site is somewhere in this clearing. We haven't actually found it yet. We need to search to find it. And the way we're gonna locate it is by rolling the search dice. And we're looking for two of these, tele these magn or I almost said magnifying glass. That's totally not what I want. These telescopes, these retracting telescopes. We got two of them. We're gonna find the site. And then we're gonna gain some legend points and some fame. And then we're gonna put some treasures on top of that we potentially can, through further actions, loot. So let's go ahead and see if the dice are going to be in our favor with our very first search action. So we'll roll the dice and we will get two blanks. Now, I'm not liking that result, so let's go ahead and do a search action again. And again, when we do a search action, we decide which dice we want to re-roll. Obviously, I want to re-roll both of them. So we'll roll again and we will get one of the spyglasses. Okay, well, we're closer to it, but we're not quite where we need to be. So I'm going to do a third action, and let's hope this is going to be better for us because this is not a very thrilling video right now. Okay, that wasn't very good either. So now we have a couple options. I could spend one more action cube and hope beyond hope that I get lucky and that we discover the site. The problem is, is these sites are guarded by very powerful creatures. For example, the monolith is protected by the Omnicrux who is, oh yeah, he's so darn nasty. He's one of those things that can kind of eat you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if you look at it, it looks kind of like a little Cthulhu type thing. So you kind of get the inspiration of exactly what this thing is going to do to you if he finds you. I don't like that idea. The only way he would spawn, of course, is if we happen to roll the correct thing on the spawn dice, which happens to be this symbol right there, which is a treasure map. One in six chance of that happening. I don't like those odds. So instead of letting that be our early grave, because again, I want these videos to actually, you know, go through the full 30 days. That's kind of my hope here. We're going to take the sneak action. So since we're taking the sneak action, that basically ends out the day part of day six. Now we're going to the night phase. We're going to see where monsters spawn potentially. So we got ascent, which means ogres are going to come back. Gosh, these ogres are such a pain in the neck. And we're also going to get a mountain. Oh my gosh. This monolith is going to be the death of me. Possibly quite literally. Well, hey, at least you get to see how hiding actually works. And how we actually can hide and still explore 
while we happen to be hiding. So first things first is we are going to spawn three ogres. All three of those nice little ogres are all gonna come out into the monolith. They said, hey, we hear that there's a wonderful hero here and I hear they taste crunchy and say tasty in milk or something like that. So we got three ogres and two juvenile dragons. We'll put both these out. So we have all five of these creatures in this spot right here. You betcha, I wanna see if I can hide because otherwise this is gonna be a very, very quick video. Very quick. Okay, this might end up being a very, very quick video. Horribly quick, unless... Oh, I can evade. <laughs> this is not gonna be as quick of a video as I thought. Very, very fortunately, I can evade. So, I am not hidden at all, so... That sneak action was kind of wasted. Well, maybe not wasted, but we're going to go into the battle phase. So for the very first part of the battle phase, all of these creatures, all five of them, are going to challenge me, which means they are basically all targeting me. So to let you know exactly what this looks like, kind of looks like that. Kind of super duper painful. I don't like the way that works. So they are all going to challenge me because I'm the only tasty morsel that's available to challenge. So now we get the chance to activate any artifacts. We don't have any artifacts to activate. So now we get to go to the evade step. And if we look at this, we see that maneuverability two, maneuverability two, 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 and two. I can put three cubes into the maneuverability because I can actually do up to four. But the good news is I actually have three of them and I'm allowed to spend five every single combat because I didn't alert, so I can't do six. So we are going to evade, and we are going to evade and pick a clearing to move into. I think we're going to move over towards the three, but again, we're not there yet. We actually have to spend movement to go there. But this combat is quite 100% over. So let's go ahead and start day number seven. Again, I said I'm going to speed these things up just quite a bit. Clean everything up, and the first thing I need to do is do a move action, which is going to put me over into this clearing right here, which means I only have three actions left over. <sighs> you know what? I think I'm going to not do that. I'm trying to play smart, because playing smart is going to teach you how the game plays better. I think instead of going into that clearing right there, I think what we're going to do is we're gonna go explore over here. I really don't have much yet. I mean, a little legendary abilities, a little bit of fame, but let's go ahead and get this map explored. So I'm gonna say instead of it going towards this clearing right here, we evaded towards this clearing right here, which puts us right there. So let's go and start day seven a little bit over again. So for the very first action for day seven, we're gonna do a move and I'm gonna go ahead and moving into the grassy plains right here. Now that we're in the plains, we have not explored this yet, so we're gonna reveal and we're going to get a gate. Well, this is kind of interesting. So now we've connected the grassy plains because it's the number two, so it goes in slot number two. We've connected that over here with the nail ridges. So that's actually kind of beneficial. It's not money, it's not loot, it's not treasure, it's not sight. So it's not that beneficial to me, at least not the way I want it to be. <sighs> I'm thinking that dang monolith is going to be the bane of my freaking existence at this point. Okay, let's go look towards the Unbroken Lands just because I'm trying to show as much gameplay as possible. So we're gonna do one movement which will take us over to the gate. Now I do have the option of going into the gate which I'm gonna do. Let's go ahead and have fun. Let's go into the gate and let's pop out over here and then we are going to do a sneak action. I think that's actually a better idea. Again, I'm trying to play smart here because at least that way you can see how the game plays. Let's go to our dice tray. We are looking for mountains or sound. Actually, we're not looking for either one of them. So we got forest and we got the treasure map. Now, the treasure map would be really, really interesting if we happen to have a site in this location because that means the big baddie for that site would actually spawn, which actually is interesting because if I had stayed here, that means that the Omnicrux would have actually spawned in that location and meaning that monolith is a place I am never going to get to explore. So it looks like I actually made a good choice by just, you know, getting the heck out of Dodge. So again, hide. 
Combat spells, not going to worry about it. Let's go ahead and start at day number eight. And let's hope things are going to go better for us. First thing is move here. Second thing is going to be move over here. We're now in the barriers. It's a mountain location. Let's go ahead and reveal, and we are going to get a site. Finally, things are looking a little bit better for us. Let's draw a site, and we are going to get the crypt. Okay, that's pretty nice. Protected by a lich, which can turn us into a gaseous form and make our lives absolutely miserable. You know, just, it's the little things in life. So the crypt is going to go in location number five. That actually works out for us. Darn A-okay. I'm actually happy with that. So the crypt is going to go right there. I will spend one more point of movement, and we will move into the crypt. And I'm really, really hoping I can show you what it looks like when we get to discover some treasures. Let's go ahead and sneak, because the lich is super duper nasty, and I really am not powerful enough to fight a lich at this point. So... Go ahead and roll our magic dice, which are not going to be hating us. And we're looking for mountains or carrion. We got claws and we got forest. So we are actually doing super duper okay again. I'm actually happy with that. So hide, don't need to worry about it. Combat, don't need to worry about it. So let's go ahead and start day number nine. We're going to clear off our cubes here. And the first thing we are going to do is, since we are in a crypt... We're going to go searching that crypt, or at least search for that crypt. So action number one is we are going to search for that crypt, and we got one spyglass. Okay, not quite what we wanted, so let's go ahead and spend a second action on searching. And again, the nice thing about this is I can choose which dice I want to reroll. I'm only going to reroll the failed dice. Yay! It was like a choir of angels at this point. So for two actions... We have managed to discover the crypt. So since we discover the crypt, now we're going to gain a legend point, and we are also going to gain five fame. Puts us at 27 fame. It's actually pretty good. Now that we discovered it, we can start populating it with all the wonderful treasures. So we're going to look at the board over here and find out exactly which kind of treasures are going to be there. There's going to be five deep treasures and one regular treasure. Now we have to put these treasures in the order they appear because of the way we're going to order the loot is from top to bottom. And remember, you always want the worst rolls, so that means the worst loot is towards the bottom. So we're going to take five of the deep treasures, one, two, three, four, five, and we're going to take one regular treasure. Again, we don't look at these. We're going to put the treasure on the bottom because we see it's on the bottom right here. Deep treasures are going to stack on top just like that. And that's going to be the total treasures in the crypt. So now that we've discovered it, now we can loot it, which is a separate action. So we're going to go ahead and take the loot action. And the way this is going to work is we're going to roll the loot dice. And when we roll the loot dice, the highest number is how many cards we're going to count down. And that's the card we're going to find. If we happen to get the double grabby hands right here, we get an extra bonus. We get to pick up the top three cards, look at all three of them, pick one of them to keep, and put the other two back in the same order they were found in. Basically, this means the more you loot a location, the harder and the harder it is to get more of the treasures. Because if you ever roll higher than the total amount of cards in the location, you find nothing for that action. So let's go ahead and hope that we're going to have a little bit of luck. Basically, I'm guaranteed a deep treasure because the worst thing I can roll is a five here. But if you get the two grabby hands, at least I can show you some cool things. So let's go ahead and roll. Hope for two grabby hands. I did not get two grabby hands. I got two fours, which means I'm going to count four cards down. I pick up the stack. We're going to go one, two, three, four. Again, we put all the cards back in the exact same order we picked them up. We never change the order. We never shuffle them. We never do anything like that. We're going to flip it over, and we found the saber of the fencer. We found useless thing. We found something to sell because our spear, in my opinion, is way better than that. Actually, our spear is way, way better than that. So better than that. So we're going to take this Saber of the Fencer. Again, it's not an epic treasure because it doesn't have the symbol on that, so we're not going to get any fame for it. We're not going to get any legendary points. We're just going to put that into our backpack as future fodder to sell for. So you'll see this when we get to town, but this is how much it sells for. That's not necessarily how much it costs to buy the item. You'll see that when we get to town in a little bit. Okay. I am going to do a sneak action as my fourth action, and then we're gonna see if we manage to attract some bad guys. 
and that's going to be mountains and carcasses. We rolled a swamp, and we rolled sound, so no bad guys. That's actually really, really good. Let's go ahead and refresh, and we will start day number 10. This is actually pretty darn good for us. Since the site has already been searched and found for us, it's found for us for the rest of the game. Now, in a multiplayer game, it's not found for the other players, and if the other players want to get the loot, they still need to find the location. But the place has already been found for the first time, so if other players find it, they don't get the fame and they don't get the legendary points. This only happened to the very first person to find it. And again, I'm going to continue looting. So, so my first action is, is going to be a loot action. And we will roll a two and a three, which means I will get the third card down, which is still a deep treasure. So we'll count one, two, three. And we will reveal we got an epic loot. That is really, really cool. We have a Wand of the Magician. So the Wand of the Magician allows us, when we're casting spells, I believe, if I remember correctly, we can re-roll the combat dice, which are these dice, if we don't like the combat roll result, if I remember correctly. I could look it up in the book, but we're not going to be using this one. Don't worry about it. Basically, if you ever want to know what any of these magic items do, every single one of these magic items are all listed in the book, and they tell you exactly what they do and what these symbols do. Unfortunately, there's not a printout of any kind that would have been so darn amazing if they included it in the box that just told you what every one of these symbols meant. That way you don't have to keep looking in the book every single time, but unfortunately it's not there. I'm sure somebody who's very enterprising is going to take the time to do a printout with all these symbols that you can all print out, but until that happens, the book is going to be your friend. So basically this is going to be sold for 12, but the most important thing is it's going to give us one legendary point and it's going to give us five more fame. We're going to put this in our backpack. Now, since it's found, I could equip it if I wanted to. Actually, I would be smart to equip it because I'm still using my spear one-handed, and this will allow me to re-roll fireballs, if I remember correctly. That's actually something I'm going to equip. So let's go ahead and do our second loot action for this day. We got a two and a three. So again, we pick the worst of those, which is going to be the number three, and we see if this deck is depleting. This deck is never going to get refilled. So we grab that treasure. So now basically if I roll a four or higher, it's a failed looting attempt. So it's getting harder for us to do that. Our deep treasure is the Cursed Axe. Oh, gosh. Okay, so the way the Cursed Axe works is it's kind of interesting. You are not allowed to roll attack dice. So you haven't seen this in combat yet, but basically if your attack speed is equal to the maneuver or lower than the maneuver of your targets, then you have to roll the dice to see if you actually manage to hit. It's not automatic. That would be a hit. This would be a hit only if your attack speed is equal to maneuverability, and then this is going to be a miss no matter what. So basically what the Cursed Axe causes you to do is it can hit really hard. You see it has two swords, so even an armor creature is only going to reduce one sword. So I've put three cubes in this thing. It can potentially hit for five points of damage or four points of damage if it happens to be an armor creature, which can pretty much take out a lot of things. The trick is my attack speed has to be higher than the creature. If my attack speed is equal to its maneuverability, the Cursed Axe will not attack, and I basically have wasted my action. So it's kind of a... Good item, but probably not what I'm going to use for my half orc. So basically, this is going to be fodder for selling sometime at a later date. And we see that we are now up to not a lot. Wow. Well, we have a whole whopping $17 plus our 10 puts us at 27. And with our wandering haggling, that's not worth a lot to us. Okay, let's go ahead and do another loot action. And we got a five and a five. So normally we would just pick up all the cards, count one, two, three, four, five, and get the fifth card. Since there are not that many cards left in the game or in that location, that's a wasted loot action. So now we got to decide, do I loot again or do I sneak in anticipation of night being miserable for me? I think we know what I'm going to do as I'm going to sneak in anticipation of the night coming. We will roll. Oh, I am so glad I made that choice. So we got caves, and then we got location boss. Location boss means that the lich is going to be spawned, and how we know that is because we are in the crypt. 
we rolled the treasure map right there. I'm so glad I did the sneak action. And we see that the protector of the crypt is going to be the lich. And again, we don't put the monsters out of those locations. Those are just reminders to let us know exactly what kind of creature is in, located in that location. And that means the lich has now been found. Now the lich is very, very, can be nasty. They are undead, and we see that simply because there's like a, a skull underneath their hit points, which means that certain spells and abilities that don't affect undead cannot affect them. The unfortunate thing though is if they switch to their other side, they have the ability called Vapor Form. Vapor Form means that if they cast it on me, I turn into vapor, and I'm basically cursed as vapor for a full turn where I have reduced actions that I can take. Here's the interesting thing about this though. The Lich is not armored. If I can hit for four points of damage, I can potentially take this thing out. The trick is, is I need to have at least three attack speed, possibly to take it out, which means I would need to alert. I didn't alert, which means I'm not gonna be able to fight it this round. But I'm highly, highly tempted to fight it next round because if I do, I can potentially kill it, especially if it flips over to this other side, because this other side is two maneuverability. So if I did three attack speed, I could possibly take this thing out, and that would be 14 victory points or 14 fame for doing so. That is actually super duper nice. So that is actually something to consider, but there's also another thing to consider, staying hidden, which I do. I got two blank results, which means I managed to stay hidden. So now that I'm hidden from the Lich, we are gonna go through the combat phase. Now remember, combat actually is always two rounds of no wounds being dealt. So even though I've only been showing one round, do understand there will be two rounds. And it's important to understand that because you can be casting spells. Again, it's not gonna matter for my class because I don't have any non-combat sounds that spells that really, really matter. So we can basically just speed through this very, very quickly. Two rounds of combat end with no wounds being exchanged between either one of us because I stay hidden because I'm hidden, so I'm gonna stay hidden, so let's go ahead and move on from there and start the new day. We'll clean everything up. And we will start day number 11. Four more days for this video to go. So the start of the day, the very first thing I am going to do is I'm going to do a sneak action. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, there's an interesting thing about this game is if you ever end an action in the same location with an enemy, and that's ending your action. So if I were to move away like this, nothing will happen. But if I end my action in the same location, the creature is immediately going to try to detect me, which means if I didn't do a sneak action, it's probably going to find me. If it finds me, I am going to become blocked, which means I immediately lose all the rest of my actions for the turn. So I don't think I want to mess around with that because remember, I want to possibly take out this lich. And I'm thinking, actually, you know what? I could do this smarter than that because I know I want to take out the lich. So let's actually hedge our bets because I know I want to do an alert action. And yeah, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Actually, less. Again, this is a game about hedging your bets because the dice sometimes can hate you and I don't want to lose the actions. I want to be able to alert. So the first action I'm going to do, because I'm playing smarter, not dumber here, is I'm going to take the move action and I'm going to leave the crypt and I'm going to come over the meadows. I'm going to come over the meadows because I want to do some exploring and see if I have additional options. And oh, I managed to find a random adventure. I like to call these tokens random adventures because you get fame and gold possibly based on the roll of the dice. So if you like to do a little RPing when you play these kind of adventure games, you can imagine that something happened, you got a little bit of fame for it and a little bit of gold, and we're going to figure out how that works by the roll of the dice. So we're going to roll these purple dice and we are going to gain a reward of five gold and we're going to get three gold. So we're going to do some kind of little mini adventure, mini quest or something like that, and we're gonna gain eight gold. So I will claim eight gold, claim that eight gold, and we'll add that into our treasury. We're actually getting a decent amount of money saved up. So I've done that. The next thing I want to do is I want to do the alert action. You'll see why we want to alert in just a moment. I will then do the sneak action. You're gonna see why we want to sneak in just a moment because we're gonna go ahead and try to take out a lich. Try to take out a lich. This is going to be extra entertaining if we can pull this off. 
And now let's go ahead and do a move action. So we're gonna move into this location. And again, anytime you end your action in the same location as an enemy, you must try to hide, otherwise they will make you lose the rest of your turn. Luckily, this is the end of the turn, but if we do order of operations, I still need to do my hide check right now. So we will roll our hide check. And luckily, stay hidden. <sighs> I was kind of holding my breath on that one just a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. So we stay hidden and the end of the action phase is going to occur. So now we're gonna see if any enemies are going to spawn. It'd be great if I got an arrow. Didn't get an arrow. So we are grasslands, we're not on the grasslands, and we got orcs, we're not in the orc territory. We don't need to worry about any orkiness at all. So we are hidden. We are now going to go into the combat segment of this phase. So the very first thing that we need to decide if we want to do... Oh, I could have did the fireball tactic too. Okay, maybe not. When I alerted, I made a mistake because I wanted to alert for a very, very, very specific reason. When you alert, and again, I hate to retcon, but I literally did this because I alerted for this very special reason why I want to do this. When you alert, you can rearrange all of your gear and all of your equipment. And I would have did this when I did this because that's what I wanted to do. Basically, I wanted to unequip the Wand of the Magician and move the spear into a two-handed form of attack. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because then I would get three, I'm sorry, four points of damage, which is the only way I can one-shot this darn lich. That is what I wanted to do, and I would have done that, and I do apologize. I hate retconning things when I do these videos, but it's you understand that I'm not really cheating. I literally just forgot to do the thing I wanted to do and the whole reason why I did that whole process. So we are going to unhide during the challenge phase. Since we decide to unhide during the challenge phase, that does mean that the lich is going to challenge us. Since it is challenging us, that means it is going to go ahead and lock on target with us. And we are now locked on to target with us. Now we go to phase two, where we get to activate any permanent treasures. We don't have any. Phase three, where we get to evade. We don't want to evade. We actually want to try and take this darn lich out. So now we're going to go to the targeting step. During the targeting step, I choose my target, and enemies always target whatever they challenged. Since it challenged me, it targeted me, so we know that's what's going to happen. Now we get to go on to the segment where we are going to pick our tactics. So we're going to pick our tactics. We alerted. That means we have to spend six cubes this round. So we're going to spend three cubes on our attack speed. And then we are going to spend three cubes on our spear. Since we are dual wielding our spear with both of our hands right now, that means we put all three of our might cubes onto it. And that's spending six of our cubes, and we are now done with that. Now we get to go to the tactics, and we get to see if the lich is going to spin around. The lich spins around. This is what I want to happen. It means I will be able to attack faster and then kill it. If it does not do that, that means there's a chance that I will have to roll the combat dice because my attack speed is equal to its maneuverability, and then I have to hope that I get that on the roll or I get that on the roll to kill it, which means things will not be in my favor. So I'm hoping beyond hope that the Lich spins over. I basically have a 50-50... Was it 50-50? No. I have a... Gravity works. I have a one in three shot of this thing spinning around. I really hope this happens. Yes! A little bit of happy. I just did a happy dance. Okay. So, the Lich is going to flip over, changing his tactics. Now we get to go to the resolution step. So during the resolution step, we're gonna go in attack speed order. I have attack speed of three, it has an attack speed of only two, which means I get to go first. <sighs> oh, lich, 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 you. Time to add the pain. So I have attack speed of three, it only has maneuverability of two, which means I get to do my full damage and I hit without rolling the dice. I am going to hit for four points of damage because it is not armored which means it is enough to kill it, and I have just defeated a Lich. It is dead, deader than a doornail, part of the no longer unliving, even though it was part of the unliving before. How does that work out? Is it the un unliving at this point? Oh, well, who knows? And then I'm gonna go ahead and gain 14 fame. I'm gonna put one of the ones back, 
And then I'm just going to take 15 fame. And then actually I'm going to take 20 just because I like the big numbers because it makes it look really super cool when I see all that fame. And now I have defeated a lich. I am now the unnamed half-orc battle mage, slayer of the lich, and slayer of the adult dragon, and performer of the happy dance. Okay, so the lich is now dead, and I don't have to worry about it coming back and messing up my plans to ransack the crypt. So that's actually pretty darn cool. So we're going to do the cleanup. No wounds were obtained by me. We're doing really, really darn good. I haven't even used my battle mage aspects yet, even though they were options for me. So clean up a new round. It is dead. Let's start day number 12. And we're going to start day number 12 with, let's see, there's still three cards in here, right? Right, right. Yeah, still three cards. I would not mind getting a little bit more loot from here. Or I could fly to the Twisted Steps. Actually, I'm going to do two loot, loot attempts. Then I'm going to fly the Twisted Steps. And then I'm going to sneak. I think that's what I'm going to do. Because I still got my Brogans of the Birds. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to do a loot action. And hopefully the dice are going to be in my favor. Three or less. That is a one. That is a three. Ask and get what you ask for. Nice. So we will receive, ooh, yes, the Shadow Cloak. It's so awesome. I've had so much fun with the Shadow Cloak. It's one of my more favorite items in the game. So since I'm revealing that, I will get one legend point. Let's go ahead and cash all these in for a nice number five. And then we will get five fame. So we're up to 51 fame. We're actually at effectively 10 legend points as long as we make it to town before the end of the game. I am definitely going to equip that. And what that does is it allows me to re-roll one hide attempt if I like. Definitely liking that. So that was our first action. I think for the second action is we're going to do a move, but we're going to do a flight. And I think we're going to pick this tile right here. So since we are flying, I need to roll to see where we are going to land. Using all the Mighty Dice Tray, we will get a four, which means we will land right here in this clearing. Since we are in the Twisted Steps, so we will draw this right here, and we will find an item. Not bad. Let's draw an item to see what we found. We found a long sword. Effectively, we found cash. Six dollars. Okay, so that was second action. Third action. Action is going to be a move, and I think we're going to start heading towards the keep. So we're going to move here, and then the final action, we will do a sneak action right there. Okay, let's see if we're going to spawn any bad guys. Uh, we are looking for planes or stench. So, ah, well, this is actually a good thing right here. We got to return. And we got to do some cleaning up here. This is actually kind of looking better for us. So this return means that all of these creatures, all the ogres, and all the juvenile drakes are all going to go home. And don't you come back no more, no more. Okay, they're going to go home. That's going to be from the return arrow right here. Now, if there happened to be a site in my location, such as a crypt or the monolith, that boss would respond, since that is not in my current location, I don't need to worry about it at all. That's going to end our turn. Let's go ahead and start day number 13. Okay, day number 13. We are going to move one movement over here. We are now in the Lonely Mountains. Let's go ahead and see what we found in the Lonely Mountains. We found another site. There's only two sites left, and we will reveal ooh, the Horde. Not too far away from us. Kind of nice. So we will get the Horde down there. Um, do I go for it? It's always nice to have more loot. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to do two more points of movement. I'm going to go move, move. And then we are going to sneak. Let's go ahead and roll for our bad guys. 
Let's see, we got plains and then we got carcasses. If we look over the board here, we are looking for mountains and we we're looking for claws for the griffins. Did not happen, so that's gonna end it that day. Let's go ahead and start day number 14. We will go move here, move here, move here, and then we will sneak right there and let's go see if we're gonna get any more bad guys. We got orcs and we got forests. So no bad guys are gonna spawn on us. We don't need to worry about it at all. And that was turn 14. Okay, here is the final turn of this second part video. Let's go ahead and start turn number 15. So turn number 15, I am gonna do the very first thing is I'm gonna search for that site. Cause remember, we don't know where the horde is. We just know it's around here somewhere. So let's go ahead and see if we can find it. First search, or search action. Yes, nice. Okay, we found it. So since we found the horde, we are going to gain one legend point and then we are going to gain five fame. We look over here on the board, find the hoard. It comes with four deep treasures and four regular treasures. If we switch the map or the camera over so you can see that, move that up just a little bit. We say there's four deep treasures and we see that there are four regular treasures. So we're gonna grab the four regular, two, three, four. Grab the four. This is definitely a hoard, but it's also protected by a great worm. That's not good. And we grab the deep treasures. So we have eight total treasures here. Let's start the looting frenzy now. So loot action number one. Two and a two. So we'll grab the second card. And it's going to be, ooh, the tricky ring. Okay, that's actually kind of interesting. So what the tricky ring does is it allows me, if I had a gray magic cube, I can spend it to give me one more point of maneuverability speed. Sorry, speed, not maneuverability. One more brown cube in the speed. I don't have gray magic and I don't really have a problem with my speed. So it's not something that this hero needs to worry about, but this can actually be a really good item when you get it. So for me, it's basically going to be vendor food at this point, but it's an epic item. So I'm going to gain one legendary point and we're gonna gain five more fame. So since I have 15, I'm just gonna grab another 20, puts us at 61. Basically, we are at 13 victory points right now. So we're actually doing pretty good. So we're gonna put that into our vendor slot potential. And I do believe that's going to end turn number 15. I hope you've been enjoying this video so far for Dragons Down. In the next one, we're going to go ahead and finish the gameplay off with turn 16 through 30, or day 16 through 30. Can our half orc and battle mage make it all the way through a full 30 days in Dragons Down? We'll come on back and find out. As always, thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, and do all that like, subscribe, and bell dinging, and commenting stuff because you know it's the cool stuff it's what's all the cool kids do yeah cool kids